breaking God's law, justice, justice, adultery, or any other thing like that, then all of a sudden it becomes okay. And the amazing thing to me, again, is that video games didn't start here. They didn't start, start like Mortal Kombat. When we were children, uh, Atari came out. That's right. And there was Pac-Man, and you just ate the little dots on the screen, mm -hmm. and you needed to get to the little energy thing so that you could, well, I guess so, you could have to kill the little monster thing that's after <laughs> you. But it didn't start as bad right. um, as, it, as it is now. And so Satan, again, has just you know, started something off really innocent. He's allowed it to take about 20 years or so. And now it is to a point where it is very bad. Matter of fact, um, there's even video games that they don't just have killing, but there's, there's women that appear on the screen and they're half naked women. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of them, I don't really understand. I don't know if you win, I guess the woman appears or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Pornographic video games. I have a friend uh, uh, in Australia who uh, email who actually mailed me some information on video games and he's done a lot of research, Stuart Masaferi. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, we, we've been in contact and I mean, he, some of the things he's been sharing with me about the, where the video gaming industry has gone is just absolutely mind blowing. And the, and the sad thing is that so many parents don't see it. And again, it is infiltrating, I mean, like I said, young people in the church. Satan is sending out this flood and you know, again, we've been saying this in a couple of programs. It seems like we're, you know, is this picking out a straw of video games? You know, this is not a straw. This is no. a flood. And we see it in, in, in the churches. We see it in the world. The enemy is, is flooding the minds of young people with so many things that it is impossible for them to keep their minds focused on, on God. And it's only for one purpose, and that is so that it will not follow the will of God or won't even think about following the will of God. That's right. You know, we've been talking about imagination. And, you know, I'll tell you something. If you, if you read Isaiah 26 and verse 3, and we've mentioned this text quite often, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. You know the word there for mind? If you look in your margin in your KJV Bible, you will see the word imagination right that will keep him in perfect peace whose imagination is stayed on thee and you'll notice the similarity between the word imagination and image imagination and image through these images in the video game and through these images uh, through the media what the devil is attempting to do is he is appealing to the imagination because he knows that it is through the imagination, whoever has the imagination has the heart. Right. You see? So if the devil provides this, this, uh, this atmosphere where he says, hey, let your imagination run free, unrestricted, but really unrestricted means unrestricted to the law of God. You see? Then he knows that he can have the imagination and just as those in the antediluvian age, Noah's time, were destroyed because Satan got a hold of their imaginations, it's the same thing he's doing now. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. And we're seeing that the imaginations of men's hearts are only evil continually. Atante, I remember the story, reading the story of, uh, of how Harry Potter uh, came into existence. Uh, Mrs. Rowling was on a train riding one day and she says, uh, um, Harry Potter, she was sitting there on a train, she says, Harry Potter just walked into her imagination while she was on that train. Right, and she I called it, you know, she, it was, it was a, a, a spiritual experience, so, you know, a, a, an invigorating experience. She just got this idea that just popped into her head, Harry Potter. Now, I, I, I would ask, where did that thought come from? You know, I think it was a thought bomb from the enemy. That's right. And, and so from this this woman's imagination, uh, she begins to put this stuff down on paper, and then through her imagination, that, uh, uh, I mean, this, this, these books that she has now written have gone all across the world, and through one woman's imagination, m literally millions, in fact, the next Harry Potter book is coming out, and they are printing 10.8 million copies for the first printing, the most ever in this country. Wow. You see, and so the devil is after the imagination, and he, through, through just the imagination of one person, look at what damage he can do. Now think about this, Tante. He's got the imagination of uh, the entire Hollywood elite at, at his fingers. That's right. So all he has to do is inspire and say, okay, this is what I want you to do, all right, I want you to make this video game, okay, I want you to do this, and 
it just goes out. Mass media. Think about this, Atante, and you, you listening out there, watching out there, think about the, the, the warfare that is going on between media and meditation. Those words sound alike, don't they? They do. Media and meditation. Both have to do with what goes on right here. We are no longer wanting to meditate on God and His Word because the media is taking control of our lives. The media is flooding our minds through all these different things. And because of it, when we close our eyes to pray,